who are the most important people when it comes to this playoff race? Could be a coach, could be a player, could be a commissioner, I suppose. Is there somebody in your mind on the short list that you're like, hey, this is probably going to be a massive piece in who ends up hoisting the hardware January 20th in Atlanta? Uh, well, let's let, let's start with a player. I love it. You know, if we're talking about the 2024 season, uh, let's start with Will Howard. Because I think if Ohio State has uh, some real question marks, it's going to be around their offensive line. But I think they, they, they have at least enough there. And then it's going to go right to the quarterback position. Will Howard has the fourth best Heisman odds. I think that's extremely inflated, but that's what comes with the territory of being the quarterback at Ohio State. This is a loaded team. There was just a headline a week ago that I think they came out that they may have as many as 15 you know, NFL draft picks trying to rival Georgia's all-time record. They're going all in. Ryan Day understands the pressure. He only got amplified with the comments by Jim Tressel and, and Urban Meyer. Um, but I think there are real questions about who is under center uh, for Ohio State. They moved on from Kyle McCord. You look at Kyle McCord's raw stats last year, J.D., they're pretty good. But he was a little underwhelming, couldn't really hit the deep ball, maybe didn't get the most out of Marvin Harrison Jr. Now they bring in a guy who they feel like, frankly, maybe doesn't maybe doesn't have the upside, I guess, of a Kyle McCord, but the floor is a lot higher. Uh, and so I'm curious, you know, you know, is the, the slightest margins, is that, that's what's going to take, you know, when you're talking about having to win 16, 17 games in this new 12-team playoff, it, can, can they get enough out of, uh, out of a Will Howard. I think he's a guy, if I'm, I'm kind of starting there, because I, I, I do have questions. I do have some questions. You know, his his accuracy can kind of come and go. The yards per depth, yards per target, you know, again, a little question, a little iffy there. And yet, I think part of the reason why he is attractive and why maybe, you know, they did go after him with such vigor and, and kind of pulled him away from the likes of USC and others is that, where was Ohio State had issues? Where did they have issues last year? In the red zone. They couldn't score touchdowns. Will Howard, I think, provides some stuff with his legs, with his wheels, with his ability to kind of maneuver the pocket, navigate uh, a little bit back there. And so he's, he's kind of – if I'm talking about, you know, guys that could make an impact or, or most interesting for the college football playoff this fall, I'm going to start with Will Howard. Who you got? Jesse – Typically, you and I on Twitter, like we have a lot of good interactions. Uh, a lot of them, though, it's like we have differing opinions, which is just, I mean, it's its what the, the beautiful part about what we do is that we get to have that kind of banter, that kind of discussion. Uh, I have three guys listed. Will Howard is at the top of my list. Like that, that was who I was going to mention next. And I think the interesting thing with him, you just mentioned his, his mobility. Like I'm looking at his experience. Like Kyle McCord as – probably as physically gifted as he is throwing the football. I think he probably looks a lot better in, in a pro day than maybe he did last year for Ohio State. But I'm looking at the big spots, like against Notre Dame, where it, they took him all the way down to the wire. And he made some made some big throws to lead them on that final drive. He also had a throw in the red zone that probably should have been an interception end of the game. Uh, the game against Michigan, where quite frankly, you just you can't throw two picks and expect to be a team that's as deep as Michigan is. So, like you mentioned, those stats I thought were, were were solid, but like you said, when you kind of dial in the things that Will Howard has that maybe Kyle McCord doesn't, I think Will Howard is a substantial upgrade just from an experience standpoint, from a mobility standpoint. Throwing the football downfield, you know, I guess remains to be seen. I am so fired up to watch him in Chip Kelly's offense, though. I think that is going to do wonders for him. I think that backfield will do wonders for him. And uh, I think he's going to have a really big year. It's one of the reasons why I am as Ohio. Well, I'm Ohio and Ohio State as well as I'm pretty sure everyone else is uh, in the country at this point. Uh, I'll throw one out here. How about Pete Golding, Ole Miss defensive coordinator? Like, if Ole Miss is going to make some noise in the playoff and make some noise in the SEC, feel pretty good about the offense as long as Lane Train's running the show and as long as you got Jackson Darty back there and their plethora of weapons on the perimeter. The next step for Ole Miss for me is can they play not elite defense, but just like more than solid defense. I think Ole Miss is, is going to be much better on that side of the football. Obviously, what they did through the portal, uh, guys they had coming back like Sunterine Perkins and Ivy, like they, got, they got some dudes on that side of the football. If Pete Golding can maximize that talent, I think Ole Miss could be a, a very real player when it comes to making a playoff run. You buying that or you selling that, Jesse? 
I, I'm buying that. I'm someone that I, I do want. I'm kind of in the see it to believe it camp with Ole Miss and Lane, just that he's a guy that historically has done really well at winning the games he's supposed to. Um, and yet his defenses or, or just teams in general seem to get sliced through uh, like a nice piece of sourdough when they play against the big boys. And so we saw him lose by five touchdowns to Georgia. They couldn't do anything, uh, you know, against an Alabama team that was really kind of spinning its wheels at that time a year ago too. But the additions of a Walter Nolan, a Prince of uh you bring in, uh, you know, some other – depth pieces there, linebacker, the, the kid from Arkansas. Um, now this is year two for Pete. And, and so he, he certainly did, I think, make some strides with that unit a year ago. You see some of the defensive improvements and success rate run defense. But now can they do that against the likes of, hey, can you go in and, and what sort of defensive effort can you have at night against LSU and Baton Rouge? How do you play uh, against a Georgia team that, yes, it's going to be in Oxford, but that's going to be a loaded offense that you know probably has as many dynamic playmakers when you're talking about tailback, tight end, and receiver together as any in the country. So I like that pick. Pete, Pete Golding has a lot on his shoulders. They're paying him a pretty penny, and you know it, it, Lane has basically said, "This is your deal. I just got you the groceries. You need to make it cook. So let's see if he can make it happen." I love that. Just don't be sourdough. Is that too much to ask? Don't, don't be sourdough against the big boys is what we're asking for here, Pete Golding. Uh, who else you got uh, when it comes to who could be maybe a, a more impactful figure on this college football playoff race? Well, let's, maybe let's go a little bit deeper down. You know, it's easy to I think that it, it, Ole Miss is a team, at least, that, that has garnered a lot of buzz. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we, we both believe that Ohio State's one of the, the, the kind of favorites there. What about a team like Oklahoma? What about a team, let's just say as a program, maybe not a player. Oh, we can say we can say whether it's Brent Venables or whether it's Jackson Arnold or whether it's just Oklahoma. Their win total is only seven and a half. That's not a team that you know certainly is entering the SEC in year one with a ton of expectations. And yet Venables just got this contract that even though his overall record, 16 and 10, is rather mediocre. It's clear the administration there in Norman does not believe he's a mediocre head coach. And I don't believe he has a mediocre team this year, J.D. I think if that schedule wasn't so gnarly, if they had Texas's schedule with this roster, I think, I think their win total would easily be around 9 or 10 as well. I think they have done a really nice job in the transfer portal, plus you add in what they've done recruiting – I think Oklahoma is going to be a playoff spoiler. I don't think they're going to make the 12-team field, but I think they may negate a team or two in the SEC from perhaps getting there. And so I think Oklahoma, while they're not merely in that conversation of, oh, are they going to be a Penn State or an LSU or one of these teams, that if they don't make it, their fan bases are going to be pissed. I don't think Oklahoma is going to be like that, but I think Oklahoma may piss off some other fan bases by maybe giving them a a loss or two down the road sometime in 24. It is so bizarre to see that OU logo and then next to it, the over under seven and a half win total. It's like, wait a second, that, that brand of that, that doesn't usually go together, but I think you're you're on the money. Like I think the defense is going to be really freaking good. Like Brent Venables, uh, coaches defense, like chefs in Italy, no pizza. He knows defense. I think the big question for me is, what do they get out of that offensive line? Like, if I'm talking about the most important figure with Oklahoma, Jackson Arnold's probably number one. Bill Biedenboe, the offensive line coach, might be the, the second guy for me in that discussion. So I'm curious how much they're able to get out of that unit as they replace pretty much that whole uh, side of the line of scrimmage for them. But if they can protect Jackson Arnold and we get to see him kind of get his sea legs and maybe evolve sooner rather than later into that five-star quarterback he was built out of high school – Oklahoma, like you said, they could uh, they could be a thorn in somebody's side. That game where they host Tennessee early is one that I'm watching closely. I uh, I cannot wait for that one because it's storylines galore. Uh, speaking of Tennessee, though, I got one more quarterback for you here, Jesse. How about Nico? You got Nico Mali Ava, man. Like if he ends up being what we think he could be, like does anybody want to see 2022 Tennessee in a 12 team playoff? Like I think legitimately that's what we're looking at here with the ripple effect with the Vols and what Nico could be if he ends up finding his top end a little bit sooner rather than later. You buying that or selling that? 
I'm buying that. I mean, I, I, I actually think that if Tennessee is going to be a playoff team this year, I, I think Nico is going to get a lot of the deserve and shine, but it's going to be about Tim Banks' defense making an even bigger kind of ascension. They've kind of made gradual growth, gradual leaps the last few seasons uh, under their defense coordinator there. Now they bring back Pierce. They've kind of retooled that secondary with some transfers and some veterans. Uh, the defensive line is still, you know, but they, they have a couple six-year guys there. So I, I think Nico is going to garner the headlines, but it actually may be about some defensive growth because I do think the offense is just naturally going to be better. A, I think Nico is a more – it's just a uh, – not only is he a, a, a more high upside talent than Joe Milton, I just think that he's going to be able to hit some more layups that 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 Milton just simply bricked mm-hmm. uh, too many times. The receiver room is absolutely better because I think Brew McCoy, Thornton are both going to be healthier. You bring in Braswell from Tulane. Uh, you still have Squirrel Wright, Chaz, Nimrod, you know, some of these other guys. You bring in the five-star Mikey Matthews. So receiver room is going to be much improved. So offensively, I just think naturally they're going to be – they're going to take a leap forward. But I think defensively, if they make the playoff, that's actually where it's going to maybe be in the margin to be the difference. And you've been all over that too. So, folks, if you haven't yet been keeping up with all Jesse's work at On3.com, what are you doing? All right, dial in. My man's dropping heaters on a weekly basis. I mean, sometimes twice a week basis. So lock, lock it over there and uh, stay up with all the good stuff Jesse's doing. Jesse, any other uh, – figures you want to talk about in the playoff race before we move on here yeah let's go outside the let's go outside the sec footprint for one here's a guy that i'm skeptical of but maybe what about dju Ooh, i like this because florida state florida state they're, they're they're having to reload a lot and yet they're still the favorites in the acc uh you know it's gonna be it's them miami Clemson, Miami's never won the ACC. Clemson, have they done enough in the portal? No, they didn't do anything. So, you know, it's it, 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 can they actually win? I will see. But I think the rest of Florida State's roster, what Mike Norvell has done in the portal has just been, you know, he is the portal king because he has absolutely identified the right guys, not just the guys, but getting the right guys, hitting on them. Really like the kind of the, the, the train that they've built from Tuscaloosa, I think Rodell Williams, you know, uh, the nickel they got there, Earl Little, um, some of the other guys. And you bring in Marvin Jones Jr. Uh, from Georgia on the, you know, the, as an extra pass rusher. But it's going to center around the quarterback. You know, the reason they fell off immediately uh, when Jordan Travis got hurt was because they didn't have anybody behind them. And so I'm not sure that there's anybody really behind DJ if he falters. So if the Seminoles are actually going to repeat as ACC champions, we're going to need to see DJ do something that he hasn't really done, which is play with consistency. And there's going to be a lot of pressure on him going back to the ACC. That game against Clemson is going to be super hyped. Uh, and, you, you know, the track record, I think, overall for a lot of these guys at their third stops probably isn't that high. Can he be an outlier? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a fair question, but I'm so glad you brought him up. Like, imagine being a Twitter troll with all the DJU slander, and then he just goes and lights it up in the ACC his first year in Tallahassee. Like, that to me, just like selfishly as a college football fan and someone who enjoys the storylines, that would be awesome. And my stance on this, too, is like, why not DJU? Like, based on his best season at Clemson and what Jordan Travis did last year that was good enough to win the ACC, you know, obviously the defense at Florida State carried a – a pretty pretty substantial load in that ACC title race but like I think it's not a it's not a wild stretch also he's got I would say as good if not better weapons than he's ever had he's gonna have the best play caller he's ever had he's now had more experience than he's ever had if that counts for anything so like I'm, I'm with you I'm on the DJU train and if for no other reason I would just love to see him uh, dunk on some of the uh, the punchline that's been dealt his way since he's uh, been playing some college football Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.